ancient kingdom of Nepal, last of the forbidden lands, a country known as the home of the gods, where temples and shrines are more numerous than houses. A land of contrasts, whose varied architecture marks it as the meeting place of two great religions of the East, Buddhism and Hinduism. A land where primitiveness and ritual go hand in hand with friendliness and laughter. The intricate art and architecture of Nepal are a source of wonder to the few travelers from the Western world who have been permitted to see them. They bear testimony to the genius of a tribe of master craftsmen, the Niwars, the original inhabitants of Nepal. In centuries past, the Niwars traveled far beyond their own borders and, in all likelihood, it was they who introduced the distinctive pagoda style to China and Tibet. One of the crowning achievements of Niwar architecture is the Temple of Bodhina, the magnet of all the great Buddhist pilgrimages. Fluttering prayer papers give the temple a festive air, while the glaring eyes of Buddha remind the faithful that their activities are being watched. A reminder which even the children heed as they busily spin the prayer wheels at the base of the temple. The seven million inhabitants of Nepal live in a country ringed by mountains and guarded by jungle. There has been practically no contact with the Western world. For hundreds of years, each generation has known a primitive way of life, hardly any different from that of the generations preceding it. Despite its isolation, Nepal has been a bridge between India to the south and Tibet to the north. The mixture of these two civilizations has resulted in a bewildering variety of Nepalese costumes, customs, complexions, and, of course, eating habits. Here, a traveling Hindu fakir, or yogi, demonstrates the latest in imported headgear, a turban fashioned out of hair instead of fabric. Ah, a perfect fit. This hairdo is much simpler. Only a top knot remains to lift the youngster to heaven should he die. Like women everywhere, the fair sex of Nepal have a flair for decoration. Only here it expresses itself in unusually colorful ways. And almost any part of the anatomy is fair game. The Nepalese housewife has good cause for smiling. She's her husband's bank account. Instead of salting away his capital, hubby invests it in jewelry. A man's wealth can actually be gauged by the decoration sported by his ever-loving spouse. In a land where so many gods are worshipped, festivals and religious ceremonies occupy a good part of the time. Almost every day is a holiday. Some of the festivals are not only gay like this one, but also gory, like the annual Hindu festival of the Desera, during which hundreds of buffaloes are decapitated as sacrifices to the goddess Durga. A wedding is also an occasion for celebration. It's an expensive affair, but not for the blushing bride. Her trousseau and ornaments are paid for by the groom, who also puts the bill for all the expenses of the elaborate ceremony.
pleasant as they are for the bride, weddings and festivals are only a brief interlude in a way of life that is hard and often unrewarding. The soil is poor, the tools of agriculture are primitive, and even when a crop does grow, it's often raided by sacred monkeys and other animals which cannot be harmed. Near Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal, there are several small towns. One of these is Pashupati, the doorway of death. The townspeople do a thriving business carrying bundles of wood. For the great desire of the Hindu is to be cremated here and then set afloat in the holy waters of the Bagmati River. For the living, the Bagmati serves to cleanse not only the soul, but also the laundry. And now we come to the ruling tribe of Nepal, the Gorkhas. Almost 200 years ago, the ancestors of these soldiers defeated the Niwars in bloody battle and took over the top spot in the kingdom. Since then, both the army and the government of Nepal have rested firmly in Gorkha hands. Despite his fondness for dancing while dressed in milady's finery, the Gorkha is considered one of the toughest fighting men in the world. Gorkha regiments have fought valiantly in the British Army for many years. During the First World War, a quarter of the male population of Nepal, some 200,000 Gorkha soldiers left their women, families and entertainment behind and distinguished themselves in combat abroad. Although the Gurkhas have traveled beyond their own borders, Nepal itself, with its temples, beliefs, and people, has hardly been touched by what we call civilization. It remains a land of savagery, simplicity, and beauty. A land which only now is beginning to reveal its secrets and its splendors to a curious world.